mudras and inner state of the mind in yoga mudra is the word used mudra means gestures in dance these gestures occupy a very important place specifically in the indian art form of bharatanatyam kuchipudi and all in fact all the various dance forms uses gestures to express one of the master dancer he expresses through gestures the coyness of a bride who is waiting who has her face covered with the drape she wants to look at her groom but she does not want anybody to know very quietly in a particular mudra or gesture she just raises the corner of her drape looks at the groom and nobody notices this these were developed by dancers and yogis nanak says o yogi exhibit the gesture of fulfillment and contentment also that of ignominy or modesty goraknath the master of from south india specifically from maharashtra developed many gestures or mudras these mudras are very important probably you would have not noticed that these gestures are connected to the mental state in relaxation anger compassion etc your gestures differ when you are full of compassion for someone at that time closing your fist in a gesture of hitting someone will seem out of place and almost impossible in the moments of compassion your fist will remain open human mind and mental states or gestures are directly connected and these are connected to your physical gestures and postures therefore using a particular gesture you can change your energy pattern so in the state of anger you follow a gesture you cannot remain angry also if you use a gesture that is related to anger a violent energy will start surging within you in this century psychologists james and lang have worked on this together they developed something that is known as james lang principle they tried to prove something different it is believed that man runs when he is afraid it is true However James and Lang tried to prove that man is afraid because he is running they emphasize on the gestures or mudras we say that man is afraid therefore he is running James and Lang said the opposite man is running that is why he is afraid if he stops running fear will disappear if gesture changes the inner state also changes there are different gestures for different states of mind this implies that gross body and consciousness move parallel to one another in a state of happiness your physical gesture is different if you closely observe you will find in happiness your gross body begins to expand and in sorrow you begin to shrink within it is as if the tree has now condensed in the seed form if you study such gestures then by looking at someone you can understand the inner state of the person in happiness you expand in sorrow you shrink in anger lines on your forehead changes and when you are free from any worry 
then such lines disappear from the forehead. It was not James and Lang who discovered this. Instead, this was experienced by the masters and sages in India from times immemorial. These gestures or mudras in dance form were developed long ago. No one has done so many experiments on human body and consciousness as these sages have done. It was found that with each state of consciousness there is a corresponding body gesture. With this a device came into existence to change any mental state if you change the body posture. During anger bring in the gesture of calmness. Suddenly you will find something has changed within. Energy is secular. You can mold it as you wish. Energy is fluid-like. It can acquire any form or shape. Energy is fluid-like. Through gestures you give energy a particular shape. Gesture is the skeleton. The same energy becomes anger, love, hate and compassion with the change of the gestures. If you have learned the art of gestures or mudras, you can change your consciousness. There is a danger in this technique, like any other. The danger is that in the process you may get involved in the gestures so much that you forget the purpose of these gestures or mudras in bringing about transformation. These gestures or mudras are there to bring about a transformation. These hand and body gest bodily gestures are outer devices for inner transformation. These are the outer structure on which the inner structure has to be built. It is like building a house. First outer skeleton is made, then you do not stop continue until the entire structure is complete. Gestures or mudras are like a skeleton. By the time Nanak came on the spiritual horizon, mudras became important. The journey discontinued. People started living in gestures. Someone sits in the gesture of compassion. He has forgotten that for compassion something has to be done within. Gesture is of compassion but deep within the anger is perpetuating. His bodily gestures are still but deep down an ocean of anger overflows. This we call acting. This is what you see all around on a day to day basis. Someone comes at your door begging, he implores to get the favors. If you give him according to his expectations, then he will shower praises. And if you deny giving him anything, then his anger and the true color will come to the surface. Buddha and Gorak asked his disciples to be begging monks. This brings humility. When you are begging, you cannot be arrogant. Buddha asked his monks to act, to stand at the door, and if the housekeeper gives something in arms, it is all right. And if no one comes out to give, move to the next door. Just stand with eyes closed for a few moments and then move to the next door. Do not even wait for the reply in the negative. Buddha said, if you wait for the person to say no, this is violence. Never create the situation of compulsion for anyone. And bless the person irrespective of the situation. Your blessing has nothing to do with giving or taking away. Buddha had a disciple called Purna Kashyap. Purn attained. He is enlightened now. Buddha asked him to go 
and share with others what he has gained. Many lamps are unlit. You go and light these lamps. You have attained. Now you need not remain with me anymore. There are neglected areas in the state of Bihar. Purna expressed his desire to go to that particular area to spread the message. This particular area of Bihar, the eastern state in India where Buddha and Mahabir lived and continued to spread their message, is not only backward but is also like a criminal area, infested area. Purun expressed desire to go to that area to spread the message. Buddha asked Purun not to go there as the people in that particular area were difficult to deal with. Buddha told that their people may abuse him, stone or evil kill him. At this Purun replied, only such a place a physician is needed. Physician is not needed if the people are healthy. Buddha said, before I allow you to go there, you have to answer three questions. The first question is, if people insult and abuse you, then what would you do? Poon replied, the people were so nice that they only insulted. They could have killed. The second question Buddha asked, if they throw stones and thus welcome you with shoes, what would you do? You remember when those who are accustomed to watching cricket match or go to the stadium, people carry rotten eggs, tomatoes, empty bottles, all these things to pelt at the players. Poon replied, these people are so nice that they only threw stones. They could have even threw stones to kill as well. Now came the third question. If they kill you, what would you do? Poon replied, people were so nice that they relieved from the life that is full of shortcomings. Hearing this, Buddha opened his eyes which were half closed, half open and allowed Purun saying that now you have. Your consciousness has developed a double arrow. It is focused on you as well as on the other. When it is focused on you, compassion flows. And when it is focused on the other, you do not look at his shortcomings. Love flows. Only with such humility one can be a monk. By the time Nana came, things had changed. Monks of Gorak had lost the way. People had become scared of the monks of this particular sect and their ways. Bodily gestures or mudras can really help you. However, these are not the ends. All these mudras became defied. All the existing traditions were not of much use. Nanak addresses these monks, sadhus and saints who go on, a, go on following the empty gestures. Your gestures of contentment and modesty or ignominy are empty. Let this be soaked in grace. The empty bag of contentment and modesty that you carry is of no use. Allow a layer of grace. Let your contentment and modesty be graceful. The word contentment and modesty are beautiful. The essence of these words is lost in the woods of life. Your contentment is now a mere consolation and consolation cannot become content. Con consolation is the outcome of disappointment and failures. In old age, poverty and sickness, people console themselves. This is false. 
Contentment is the strength, not weakness in any way. This is the highest state. This implies you have more than what you actually need. I have even that which I never thought a soul. This is not a state of defeat. This symbolizes a grand victory. There is no question of defeat. Mahabir says compassion comes to those who have attained. Nanak asks the monks and saints make the gesture or the mudra of contentment. Empty gestures of the hand and feet are meaningless. These outer mudras are meaningless, make inner gestures. And the most precious gesture is that of contentment. As soon as you are contented, all worries disappear. All worries, problems vanish. All worries in life arise because something is lacking. This is the gap between all that you think you deserve and all that you have. Discontentment is the greatest poverty. Contentment means you are the master of your being, your gestures, your moods. No situation in life can now create discontentment for such being. In every situation, you will now see auspicious and the divine will. Even in the state of deep sorrow, you cannot take away the incoming ray of bliss. He knows night is so dark, then dawn is not far away. No one can bring any dark moments in him. The thread or the sutra of contentment is in his hands. Everything and every situation is acceptable. He is the embodiment of total acceptance. Nanak says, make the gesture such an understanding of contentment. Mere bodily gestures will not do. I have told you the story of two Zen, Zen monk, monks who used to be traveling throughout eight months for this the year and during rainy season they will return to their hut and stay there. Nanak uses another word, Lajja, or literally it is translated as shame. But Lajja is ignominy or modesty. It implies your body is the temple of God. One day God will be a guest there. The body has to be prepared for this particular expression. Nanak says to always carry a grace or dignity around you. What is this dignity that Nanak is speaking of? This is your self-respect. Dignity comes when you have attained to that which is eternal. One who is established in that can express that state of dignity. Nanak wants you to be established in grace and dignity. The moment you are egoless, the roots of contentment and dignity or ignominy starts establishing in God. Rubbing ash on your body will not help. Let your meditation, your awareness, your understanding be the ash on your body. Deep within be meditative. Your meditativeness will become the ash on your being. Let there be a knot of death. Be always aware of the footsteps of death coming. Only then you can never forget God. The moment you feel that you can never die, then you forget God. Make the knot of death and your body the young unmarried one. Out of this, the way of Tantra emerged. Tantra believes that a special physical relation 
with a young virgin leads to meditativeness. This may be true. Maybe Tantra have discovered this technique. But in deep understanding, young virgin refers to undeveloped state of consciousness. This refers to subconscious and unconscious of the man. Subconscious is the storehouse of the entire pattern of transformation of consciousness. However, this cannot happen unless there is a communion with the developed consciousness. According to Tantra, this undeveloped consciousness refers to virgin and the developed consciousness refers to soul. Only a master's soul has attained to that level and its association with the seekers who are still grouping in the darkness of their subconscious, the process of transformation can begin. Let your soul be the male factor and your body be the young female. There can be commune between your solid your soul and the body. This commune or confluence between your body and the soul is the ultimate one and the way of Tantra. It will lead to salvation. The outside woman was a symbol. Through the outside woman, Tantra seeks the inner one. This particular sutra explains the entire Tantra understanding. Each man and woman carries deep within a complementary man and woman in the form of energy known as yin and yang, male and female, shiva and shakti. The union between your inner man and inner woman leads you to the state of samadhi and tantra understanding means you have to attain came to the union between your inner man and inner woman. It is through this union between virgin undeveloped consciousness and developed consciousness of the soul one attains to meditative. The three steps in which Bhagavad Gita is explained is first light comes, you have prepared the poles that can receive the light. Look at the light of the sun. It is the source of energy. When we create solar panels, place it on top of the roof and the sunlight forms through a scientific device. The light of sun is transformed into energy that can be used for many purposes. This is solar energy. But between the light of the sun and the energy thus transformed, there need to be a device. This solar panel device transforms the light of the sun into energy. So too, your meditativeness, your inner state transforms the light that in spirituality we call Noor or light into an understanding, into an awareness. At the level of the mind, the thoughts are illumined. They are no more ordinary thoughts. They have become a great source of energy. And when these thoughts are channeled into your day-to-day -day life, through organs of perception and organs of action, the process of transformation begins. First, solar panels are placed on this roof. Sunlight falls on it and this, the light of the sun is transformed into solar energy. It is preserved and when solar energy is preserved, it is saved. It is used as electrical energy into various forms. When light falls on your inner 
innerness it is transformed into energy as thoughts and when these thoughts are translated into your actions as organs of per as perception and action the process of transformation begins so this is the light is masculine and your innerness your mind is undeveloped virgin feminine feminine when the two attain to the union a different kind of energy is formed this is three steps when krishna's arjuna asks did you give share this knowledge of bhagavad gita with anyone in the past krishna verily says i gave it first to sun god vivashwan and from there it came to man the mind and from the mind it came to organs of perception and action ikshwa ikshwa ko is the clan in which or the dynasty in which the hindu incarnation ram was born this union between your inner man and inner woman leads to the state of meditativeness it is through this union between the virgin and developed consciousness and developed consciousness in the form of light and your if the light does not come for instance you are living in a particular way you come in contact with an awakened one he expresses his energy in the form of words in the form of messages and when you read these messages over and over again on a day to day basis something begins to rub on you something begins to change within your understanding oh this is the way the life could be lived but i have been stumbling in darkness all along i never knew to look at the life in such a way and this is such a simple way nothing was done nothing was given but a change is taking place that is where your understanding is coming in contact with in communion your undeveloped consciousness your understanding your inner state is coming in communion with the developed consciousness of the awakened one this is like an intimate relation like a male female relation and with that as the outcome meditativeness is born this ultimately leads to a state of meditativeness this is tantra supreme understanding but this is lost and the emphasis went on the outer dimension alone this led to many states even the modern psychologists is accepting this according to them man is bisexual each human life comes into existence with the union of two energies male and female your parents had the device to create your body they contributed it is during meditation that these two complementary and complementary energies merge into one another this is known as tawajjo a transfer of energy when you sit down in meditation in the communion this communion is happening between two energies your undeveloped energy and the developed energy of the master this can happen through words also because we are living in a age where technology has made the things much easier i go on sharing this energy in the form of words and messages in the fruition of which one attains to samadhi this is eternal conjugal relation a conjugal relation leads to ultimate union of two energies 
or that which you call as six at the lowest level but higher level at the level of tantra it is known as the merger of inner man and inner woman the outer union is momentary the inner union is eternal you establish a physical relation it is short lived its effect is short lived when this communion begins to happen deep within first in the company of the master then you are sitting down on your own the light is activating your thoughts the inner union is happening in an automatic way as if the autopilot is established this is the state of the master he is in a state of autopilot where every moment every speck of light as it comes it illumines the thoughts and these comes in such a fast and fury that sometimes it becomes very difficult to write it there is no particular time that when you are sitting on the your writing desk and you are writing every moment this process you are in constant communion a conjugal relationship leads to ultimate union of two energies at the gross level it is called sex and at the ultimate level where the eternal man and woman not male or female are merging into one another this is the supreme understanding of tantra in this particular sutra nanak is saying o yogi treat your body as undeveloped virgin your body its systems the sense organs organs of action and organs of perception are undeveloped virgins because they have not attained to the union with the light the awareness first awareness dawns into you as light and when light activates the thought process then it becomes awareness or understanding this refers to subconscious that is a storehouse of the entire pattern of development and transformation each individual carries his own unique development patterns let your understanding be the stick of technique consider the entire congregation as tantra path to go beyond your mind is to go beyond duality and finiteness of the body and the world and if you have to salute anyone then do to him alone he is the beginning he is pure eternal and truth and the essence of truth he is end as well he is unheard existential sound for eons he has been one without any form thus nanak brings an understanding that all salutation needs to be addressed to that which is imperishable immutable and beyond time and ex- and space you may need symbols that is a different story altogether when you are paying a respect to a particular person deep down you know you are paying respect to that imperishable immutable which is beyond time and space you may do thousand salutations in your holy places these will be meaningless unless these are directed to that immutable imperishable beyond time and space it matters not where you really bow what is really important is all that you express all your salutations are directed to him alone keep this in mind when you are paying regards to a master or to your parents or a tree or anything else that these must reach to the unknown and unknowable and this is 
why we use symbols. When you respect and all words are directed towards that imperishable, immutable one, then your idols, master, trees, etc. will be useful and helpful as well. In the absence of this understanding, these things will be an obstruction. If your salutation is not directed to him, then that will become a bondage. All your salutations need to be directed to that which is in the beginning of the creation, one that is sublime and one that will exist even at the end of the creation. That which is unheard, uncreated, existential sound and one whose form never changes. Nanak continues with this understanding in the subsequent sutras. Let knowledge be your food, then piety will be the storekeeper. Knowing or understanding the nature of daya. Daya is the Hindi word for piety. Wisdom and compassion are two wings of piety. If you have piety but you do not have wisdom and compassion, it is of no use. Knowledge and wisdom has to be within and outside will be a deep sense of care and concern. Without one, the other will remain incomplete. You have a deep understanding within and then this understanding will exhibit, manifest itself in the form of piety, in the form of compassion, in the form of love. Knowledge or knowing implies knowing your being or yourself. And daya or piety or concern or care implied knowing the other. One way you know yourself, the other you know the other. Only then something happens. Only then you come to know that you are part of that which is the two is merged into one another. In micro form, you are the part of everything. All other understandings is meaningless. When a lamp of the beam of knowing is lit, its light falls everywhere, all around. Compassion is the light that is springs forth from the lamp of knowledge. When lamp is lit, do not keep the light up to you alone. That will be selfishness. Nanak reminds you. There are many monks who are lost in their knowledge and are of no use to others. They are not concerned with others. Try to understand this. This is very important. And I have given you an example of the monks. Christian monk who is always concerned with the service and Jain monk who is concerned with that no violence should happen with him. Nanak introduced a very important concept of food sharing. Let your knowledge be sharing. And thus Nanak continues. <laughs>